Good evening. This is John Bailey. This is People to be Heard, the program where people who have something to say have their say. And tonight you've got the new Director of Consumer Protection for Westchester County, New York, USA, James Maisano. Jim Maisano, 21 years a county legislature, and now he's taking this new position. Uh, Jim, welcome to the program and congratulations. And boy, do we need you now. Well, right? thank you so much for the invitation, John. Yeah. I'm happy to be here tonight and look forward to our chat. Yes. So why did you decide to take the Director of Consumer Affairs position? Did you ask Mr. Lammer that you were interested or did he ask you? Well, I ran into George after Election Day. Mm -hmm. It was uh, before Thanksgiving. And he asked me, would I have any interest in joining his administration? Mm -hmm. Fairly general question. Um, and we chatted uh, a little further in the weeks after that. Um, and at some point, um, I mentioned that um, I had uh, always had a lot of respect for the work of the Consumer Protection Department, and we discussed it further, and eventually I was offered the position. Okay, very good. And uh, what does the Consumer Department do? Uh, do what does it actually do? What are you charged with doing? Well, you know, I would say that we have two lanes mm -hmm. in our office. One lane is licensing, and one is complaints. So we could talk about both of them. Mm -hmm. Now, we, li we do licensing for home improvement contractors, Mm -hmm. um, for landscapers, for uh, electricians, uh, and plumbers. Those are the four mm -hmm. of the areas we do a lot of licensing mm -hmm. uh, for Westchester County. Um, and then we handle the complaints against anybody that practices in those areas. So that's a, two of the big parts of our, our office. A lot of people in our office are working particularly on either licensing or complaints. I see. Uh, just looking at the future, are you planning to license some other professions or businesses? It's a good question. You know, you have to be careful with licensing because sometimes there's already existing law. Mm -hmm. You know, so you might have state law or that, or, or state law that says the local governments do the licensing. But I think we're open. Mm -hmm. We're willing to talk about any. I don't think there's anything right now that we're looked that we're going to be immediately going into licensing. I will tell you that one of the problems with the office mm -hmm. is that we're probably thirty to forty percent understaffed. Mm -hmm. uh, over the last decade, uh, the office has lost a significant amount of employees. Uh, vacancies were not filled. Mm -hmm. uh, we're down from about you know, 24, 25 attorneys, probably is the number we really need, down to about uh, 15 right now. Mm -hmm. So it's a big drop, losing 10 uh, people in the office. Yeah. So it's made it a little harder to do the mission of the office. Mm -hmm. So you're planning to uh, lawyer up? Well, I'm the only attorney in the office. So um, the, 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 we have investigators. Yeah. So we'll be investigator. Investigator up. Yeah, right. investigator right. up. Yeah. Um, so we, we need, we def, the one thing off, so I've only been there for three weeks, mm -hmm. but the one thing that's very clear in three weeks is that we need two more investigators immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, if we want to fully um, regulate uh, and enforce the laws of Westchester County that are tasked to the Consumer Protection Department, we do need two investigators. I'm talking to the county executive's office. Hopefully we'll get them filled. Yeah. Uh, how much is the case backlog? Um, it's, it's less of a backlog, although there's a small one, of it's harder to get to some laws that are on the books to uh -huh. enforce them. Okay. So the licensing is something we just have to do. Okay. Okay, that can't be a backlog there. Uh, the consumer complaints, not much of a backlog. But over the years, and by the way, which is very interesting about the position I have, is as a county legislator, mm -hmm. I passed many of the laws that are now enforced by the Consumer Protection Department, wow. which is quite interesting. Right. And... Some of those laws, I'm now finding out that we passed, mm -hmm. uh, never really were enforced as they should have been. Uh, and many of them are, are a person power. They should mm -hmm. have enough people in the office to enforce the laws. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that I'm already getting involved in. I'm taking a look. Do we need to go back to the county legislature to tweak any of these laws? Mm -hmm. Is, are they not being enforced for a specific reason? I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. A couple of years ago, you might have even covered in your paper, um, toxic toy legislation. Mm -hmm. um, stopping yeah, toxic toys that. from being sold in Westchester County. That law has never been enforced. Mm -hmm. And the reason it hasn't been enforced is that there was a federal court decision uh, up in Albany, federal court, and I believe another one out in Suffolk, uh, that invalidated the laws in those counties. Hmm. Uh, our law mimics those other laws. Those, they're all similar. So until we tweak the Westchester County toxic toy law, we can't enforce it. So I'm already having meetings with the county attorney's office and legislators saying, let's make the changes we need to make because mm -hmm. we need to enforce this law to protect kids in Westchester County. 
I see. Uh, what is the county executive Latimer's vision for the Department of Consumer Affairs? More aggressive? More informative? I, I, so, to George's great credit, and first of all, I thank him for, for giving me this great opportunity. It was very nice of uh, the new county executive to hire me and uh, to make me part of his team, so I'm excited to work for him. Mm -hmm. um, he told me to run the office at best of my abilities, and he's not going to micromanage. He mm -hmm. thinks that uh, sometimes in, in, in government that he's seen in his career, and as you know, George has been around a long time, going back to the 80s, I believe, as an elected official. Um, he didn't want it to be a top-down administration where everyone's got to take orders from the county executive. He wanted each department to have some independence mm -hmm. um, and some ability to uh, run itself. So I've, uh, I've got a pretty free reign uh, for mm -hmm. the county executive. I also think being a former legislator, that's a lot of experience in this county government was a reason that he thought I would do a good job and that uh, I was a good fit for the job. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I think the number one thing that George and I want to bring to the office is exactly what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Increase the visibility of the office. Mm -hmm. Let people know what the office does, uh, what we can do to help them. Let people know we're there to help. Um, and and so the number to call? Yeah, so the number to call is... Uh, 914-995-2155. The number again. 914-995-2155. Also, there's an email address. Someone mm -hmm. wants to send an email. It's conpro, C-O-N-P-R-O, at westchestergov.com. Conpro at westchestergov.com. Right. Just like they do on the infomercials. Yes, exactly. Uh, absolutely. That's the way to do it. And uh, what is wrong with the department now other than the staffing that uh, you uh, want to fix? It's you, staffing. It it's is the number staffing one position is that yeah. there are laws on the books yeah. that have come over the last 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. The county legislators have uh, passed laws that have a section in it that says shall be enforced mm -hmm. by the Consumer Protection Department that has mm -hmm. been difficult to enforce. Uh, another thing is doing what we do in an expanded way. Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. um, unlicensed contractors. Mm -hmm. That's a big part of what we do, uh -huh. is uh, cracking down mm -hmm. on unlicensed contractors. That's why we have this license process, particularly home improvement contractors and landscapers. Um, somebody, uh, when they hire someone, they have to be licensed in our county. You can't hire an unlicensed contractor. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, when we find the people that aren't following the law, and aren't getting licensed, mm -hmm. and aren't vetted, so that, that we know that they're properly operating Western County, uh, we, we go after the unlicensed contractors. Um, one of the ways we can be the most effective, right, mm -hmm. is not just wait for people to complain, but to get out in the field and do stings um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and the like. Find out where a lot of the illegal contractors might be dropping off things. Maybe it's where they, you know, they, the yard waste, where they dump it. Mm -hmm. um, be there, have, have some of our, again, investigators mm -hmm. going uh -huh. to the site to check the yeah. trucks and see if they have the sticker on it. You have to have a sticker on it if you're a licensed contractor mm -hmm. in Westchester County. So we need more personnel to get people on the field to do the in investigations. We can't just rely on complaints. We need to get out there. Now, don't people who apply for building permits to have these uh, projects done, don't, don't, don't the contractors have to be licensed? Are the cities ignoring it? No, well, the difference no. is, I don't think so. I think, the, no. I think that that's most of the local governments uh, do make clear that the contractors that are hired, they're doing the work uh, for a particular project. But remember, the, now you're getting into commercial. Uh -huh. We're a consumer. I see. So, so let's think more of the homeowner that hires a landscaper. Let's mm -hmm. think more of the homeowner mm -hmm. that hires the contractor to come in to build a new bathroom or mm -hmm. build a new patio deck. That's who we regulate. We don't mm -hmm. deal with commercial as much, commercial okay. development. It's the local act activity mm -hmm. between a consumer and, and a contractor. Okay. Now, one thing is close to my heart, since I'm a senior citizen, uh, neither the police, the county police, or any police are really upfront about scams going around. You know, they don't, you don't see an immediate message from, at least in my city, about particular scams. I have to call them and report them. Will the new the consumer department aggressively inform the public on these insidious thieves who use a telephone instead of a fountain pen? That gets back to your prior question. Yeah, the answer yeah. is yes. Yes. Um, and, I, and you asked me what George Latimer and I wanted for this office. That's one of the things. We want greater public education. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of scams going on out there. You know, they have this, the skimming scans and the phishing scams on the computer or the skimming fans on credit card 
machines. There's a lot going on out there. Mm -hmm. Organized crime is involved in it. There's a lot of scams going on out there. And there's some things, it's very hard for us here in Westchester County to get at the actors, because sometimes with the phone scams, mm -hmm. they're sitting in another country, you know, mm -hmm. somewhere in Africa or India uh, or South America. That's where they're sitting. Uh, right. So it's very hard for us to get at them. But mm -hmm. the one thing we can do is get the word out yes. on what's going on, what the scams so are. You're going to set up a list of the scams as soon as you hear them? Should, well, if well, people think they have been scammed, they can call it in? Well, they always can call us on these yeah, questions. Yeah, but, yeah. but I think, for instance, you mentioned the word senior citizen. Yeah. And it's, uh, I'm glad you said that because I just spoke on the phone yesterday with George Latimer. Mm -hmm. And he, we discussed on the phone that we want uh, myself and George sometimes are going to go to every senior citizen center this year. Mm -hmm. We're going to try to get to every community senior center center during this year, before mm -hmm. December, uh, and give a class to the seniors mm -hmm. about the type of scams that are out there. I'll give you two quick ones mm -hmm. that seniors are getting hit with. Mm -hmm. One is the uh, grandparent scam. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's yes, a I've been, that's been tried. Horrible scam yeah. where they call someone, call, you'll call a senior citizen, and they say, uh, uh, I'm your grandson. They go on the internet. And they go use social media to find yeah. out the name of the of the uh, grandkids. Mm -hmm. And they say, I'm stuck in Europe and I have no money and I'm in trouble. Can you send me money? And that is, been st is still being used. It's happy, it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, the other one is the IRS scam. Yes, which that, is, that is really frightening. When I first got it, I said, wait a minute. They would usually send me that, that insidious envelope. Yeah, or, or, <laughs> but I'm also talking about the ones yeah. that call. They call. Yes, they call. And they say, you know, this is the IRS, you owe money. Uh, you can do it by phone today. We can work this out today by phone. They try to get you to go to Western Union, mm -hmm. or they try to get you uh, a, a big trick now they do, you'll mm -hmm. find it interesting, is they, so it's harder to trace, they ask for gift cards. Go to the store, oh, buy right. gift cards, and give us the codes. Mm -hmm. That's how they get the money. Um, and that IRS scam is uh, uh, very aggressive, and it's happening every day here in our county and all over the country. Mm -hmm. So, again, when I go to the senior centers, do this public education, uh, I'm going to be giving a class on exactly all, all of the scams. Mm -hmm. And, for instance, I'm going to tell the senior citizens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe a suggestion. Video one of those presentations and put it up in the county Great website. idea. We'll try to do it on Facebook Live or something like that. Yeah, something like that, but... Great make idea. a tape and update it when the new one comes on. Great idea. Right. I just, uh, just want to make a point. Um, what I want to tell the seniors, and I want to tell the seniors watching your show right now, mm -hmm. when you get a call from the IRS, hang up. Mm -hmm. It's very hard. Slam it. Slam the phone. Yeah. Because it's always a scam. Yeah. It's not sometimes a scam. When somebody calls your house and says, yeah. I'm from the IRS, it's always a scam. So the seniors mm -hmm. that are listening at home. If you get that call, do not do not engage these people. Mm. Do not speak with these people. Mm. Hang up the phone immediately. Yeah. Uh, what powers does your department have to bring to bear? Well, we have the Consumer Protection Code, mm -hmm. uh, which is a law that's been on the books for about 30, 40 years here in Washington County uh, that we can enforce consumer complaints. So if someone uh, makes a complaint against a particular company in Washington County or person in, in the county that scammed them or ripped them off. Um, we mediated at first. Mm -hmm. So we'll bring in the person the, the complaint was made against. Mm -hmm. Say, what happened here? Um, there's a complaint against you. We'll speak with them. Sometimes we try to resolve it right there. If we can get them to agree to a fine, mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's not a habitual offender, mm -hmm. we might give them a fine the first time. Mm -hmm. if it's, Which would be? Uh, it could be 500, it could be 1,000, it could be, okay. I mean, it's got to fit the facts. Right. You know, it's got to fit the facts. Um, maybe if the, maybe we get a small fine, but we, if they owe money to the person who made the complaint, we get them to pay the money. Uh -huh. That's part of the mediation okay. process. Try to work out a compromise. So it's basically mediation first. At first. We mm -hmm. give everybody a chance to come in, uh, notice an opportunity to be heard, due process. Yes. Come in and tell no us. No charges. You know, uh, yeah. Tell us. Uh, here's the complaint. Tell us your side of the story. Mm -hmm. yeah. We try to work it out. If we can't work it out there, we send it to a, a hearing mm -hmm. with a judicial hearing officer where that's more formal. And there's mm -hmm. going to be a decision made by the judicial hearing officer, mm -hmm. which will have a formal penalty if they find in favor of the person and who made the complaint. The consumer doesn't have to hire a lawyer to represent They do not. They, I say, they oh. do not. Well, our office will handle the, uh, they may have to come in and testify. Oh, so you, you people should be complaining more, not less. Right. Okay? That <laughs> sounds like a good deal to me. Uh, 
will you be developing a policy towards payday loan companies who loan money at usurious rates to persons against their salaries when they get paid? It's a good question, and it's a good way for me to explain our office. I never a, knew about it. In a different light. Yeah. So our office um, does not have jurisdiction to regulate payday loans. But who does? The Attorney General. Mm -hmm. It's state law. It's an, uh, uh, regulated by the Attorney General's office. But ironically, mm -hmm. the Westchester Bureau Chief mm -hmm. for the Attorney General used to have my job. Uh -huh. He was the former Director of Consumer Protection here mm -hmm. in Westchester County. Yeah. So we work closely. I've already met with this is Gary Brown. I don't know if you ever met with Gary. Yes, I know Gary. So I've already met with Gary. Yeah. We're going to be trying to work closer than ever before. Mm -hmm. And the way we're going to work closely, if we have evidence of people vi violating the usury laws with payday loans or any other way, yeah. um, we'll bring the evidence that we find mm -hmm. to Gary Brown's office, the Attorney General's mm -hmm. office, and let them move forward with mm -hmm. their attorneys and their staff to investigate because mm -hmm. it's state law. So um, sometimes it might be federal law or state law that's, that someone brings to our office. We'll help them. Mm -hmm. We'll try. We, we might even make a call to mediate, mm -hmm. but um, eventually we may need to send it to the appropriate authority that does have the jurisdiction. Payday loans and usury laws are a perfect example where we'll work with another agency. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's great because uh, my wife was just telling me about this the other day. She listens to NPR all the time. She's much better informed than I on the day to day goings nationally. So, uh, Uber and Lyft. Do you see leaving them alone to operate as they are? Or will you propose new legislation to perhaps require criminal background checks of their drivers? This was great question. the well, Astorino advantage. Well, remember, I was a county legislator yeah, yeah. when this was all going on. Yes. So I was heavily involved, and I was the vice chairman, so I was yeah. a, uh, intensely involved in this. Um, I mean, I, listen, I'll give you my personal view as a legislator at the time, yeah. and that is... We, we do background checks on every cab driver in Westchester County. Mm -hmm. uh, Uber and Lyft should have background checks, too. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. we got sold out by the state, to be very blunt with you. Mm -hmm. um, the state legislators who represent Westchester pushed, mm -hmm. pushed to, to have legislation in Albany mandate that if mm -hmm. Uber and Lyft are going to operate in Westchester County, uh, the drivers need to be, have the same criminal background checks that the existing cab drivers have. You think? Um, yes. And they fought very hard. And I will tell you an interesting story because I was on the phone and engaged in this when it was going on last year. Mm. Uh, I believe it was this time last year during the state budget when mm -hmm. this was going on. And uh, Legislator Mike Kaplowitz and I, Mike Kap Legislator Kaplowitz was the chair of the Board of Legislators last year. I was the vice chair. Yeah. We were talking to the state legislators and they felt comfortable. I believe it was a Friday. Could have even been this day last year, mm. right before the, the budget passes by April 1st. Um, we spoke with them and they believe that the final legislation passed to allow Uber and Lyft to operate would require the background checks. When the law got through with the compromise that was done between the governor, it was gone. It was gone. Mm -hmm. um, which was very difficult for the legislators because we were placed in an impossible situation. Mm -hmm. Either don't allow Uber and Lyft to operate because we d were uh, upset that they didn't include the background checks, but our constituents wanted Uber and Lyft mm -hmm. in the county. Yeah. So we were so Astorino, Rob Astorino, then county executive, tried to do uh, a side agreement with Uber and Lyft that didn't work very well. The OK thing. Yes. So to get back to your question. Six people, six drivers it, applied for that. Did not do Terrible. well. It was, it was a... So, yeah. let me tell you two things. Number one, this year, mm -hmm. uh, as every year, the Board of Legislators, the County Board of Legislators, does a packet, a lobbying packet, to Albany of the changes we want in state law. They put that in, in the packet this year. They asked the state legislators to go back in mm -hmm. to the law regulating Uber and Lyft and add the criminal background check requirement. Uh, I haven't heard that that's going to happen, mm -hmm. but in my view, as a mm -hmm. county legislator until three weeks ago, that should happen. When somebody is victimized by an Uber driver with some sort of a felony, then they'll do it. You're probably but right. But those people are really at risk. I, mean, I agree with you. So my position as a county, I was yeah. a strong proponent of the criminal background checks. Yeah. And at this point, all we can do at this point is can lobby our state legislators and get them to edit the state law mm -hmm. and include the background checks. Right. Uh, now, something that is really coming to the surface just this week with this Facebook nonsense of thousands of millions of people having their identities compromised and picked up and used as and lobbied at, um, 
what do you plan for this type of identity um, misappropriation of uh, information? It's the same theme we've been discussing for this interview. Mm -hmm. There are some areas where it's just difficult for us to enforce. Yeah. You know, it's hard to us to, to, to you know, an office of 15 people in White Plains that deal with Facebook. But mm -hmm. we do have, like I, like I said earlier, we do have the uh, relationship with the Attorney General's office. We can marshal evidence mm -hmm. and bring it to the Attorney mm -hmm. General's office. Okay. That's what I want to explain before. If, we, if, if people are complaining, people are coming to us, we have no problem with, even, look, we even don't have a problem even mm -hmm. calling Facebook and lobby, lobbying a complaint mm -hmm. on behalf of a Westchester resident. But it may come a time where we need to go higher. We yeah. may need to go to the, the, we need the power of the yeah. Attorney General's office. I could perhaps issue guidelines of how, what you should put on Facebook and what you should not put on it. Yeah, uh, there is a private, but sense. there is a private sector element yeah, that yeah. you know people have a right um, mm -hmm. um, to to engage in social media the way they would like. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's, you're right. We should be getting out the information about what the scams are and mm -hmm. what to avoid. Absolutely. Uh, now, does Westchester need consumer protection policies that crack down on illegal housing with higher fines for violations in the county? and county inspections of multifamily housing, long a problem in the various cities, including White Plains. That's an area where we have no jurisdiction. No jurisdiction No, that's all. state law, and exactly. that's mostly in the landlord-tenant law area, mm -hmm. or it's in local zoning law, those kinds of issues. Mm -hmm. So it's not something we've ever been involved in. Um, we would direct people mm -hmm. to a, a, a building department if they had a particular question about those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. but. Um, that's an area where, to be honest with you, uh, you're really sometimes going to need an attorney to navigate landlord-tenant law or the local mm -hmm. zoning law. Yeah. Uh, however, I mean, there are organizations in White Plains that when people are seeking housing, they will give them lists of houses they can go to, and many of them are illegal. Illegal housing or high occupancy homes over... My advice on that, because yeah. as a county legislator, I dealt yeah. with this in New Rochelle yeah. all the time. Yeah. And that is, if you're aware of illegal housing, call your local government, call your building department, call your mayor, call your city council or town council member, uh, city council, whatever you have. Uh, here where it plains, we have city council. Right. Um, call them mm -hmm. and say, I am reporting that this unit, this building has illegal housing in it. Make them do an inspection. It's unsafe. Say it's unsafe. No question. Uh, we As were so lucky. Remember that 47-person um, residence that caught fire? They were so lucky no one died in that. They're Otherwise, correct. it would have been coast to coast. No, they are just waiting for that. You're right. So, and As a county mm -hmm. legislator, I will tell you, mm -hmm. I, I probably reported hundreds, hundreds. of uh, illegal housing violations that was reported to me by constituents. I reported directly to New Rochelle City Hall mm -hmm. and told them to act on it. All right. Well, this is certainly really clearing up a lot of misconceptions and, and conceptions of what consumer protection can and cannot do. And that's why you are here. It's, it's good to get a fresh start after 10 years of, I mean, the Consumer Protection Department should communicate even more, you know, than the health department does, which actually I think does a really good job. They do. And, and yeah. I don't know if you ever looked at their Facebook page. Health yeah. Department has an excellent Facebook page. Every day yeah. they put something, a post up on Facebook, something very interesting health-related issue. I yeah. find it, I, th I think they do a great job. Right. Well, look, they have to. It's really the most important department. We need them. Yeah. Uh, is real estate an issue on the horizon, considering the pressure on owners to lower their prices to a range that some may consider market realities, but others might consider price fixing? I think that's an, uh, not an area we have any regulatory no, uh, ability, but um, as I'm, I'm, I'm a 25-year real estate lawyer. Yes. So I, I, I Good think, person to ask about yeah, this. So yes. I think it's generally a private market place thing. Mm -hmm. I think the, the laws in New York State and around the country, that's a private um, market uh, area. Mm -hmm. So it's the free market. People, um, if there's evidence of price fixing, uh, there is state law that deals with that. Yeah. And I'll also tell you if there's... But that's hard to prove. It is hard. If there's mm -hmm. discrimination yeah. in housing, uh, we do have, we can deal with those issues through the Westchester Human Rights Commission. Mm -hmm. So discrimination, there is law in Westchester County yeah. to get at discriminatory legal housing actions. Uh -huh. uh, consumer protection and the power companies. You were going into a meeting after this program just about this very 
issue. Anything the Consumer Protection Department can do about that, or is thinking about doing about the latest Con Ed NYSEG um, debacle? Well, we have to respond to our constituents, and mm -hmm. clearly there's a lot of people right now in this county that are up in arms over Con Ed and NYSEG. We know this. It's on the news all the time. So we're getting a lot of calls in the consumer protection. We are have a limited jurisdiction because, as you know, the Public Service Commission in New York State regulates the utilities. Um, yes, I can hardly wait till there are strong reaction to this. <laughs> Can't you? <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Um, it's not need, funny. That's the whole problem. Yeah, you're right. I and mean, they need to be more aggressive. And um, I'm anxious to see if they're going to get more aggressive based on the latest storms. There was a public hearing. I don't know if you know this Monday in the yes, county legislature. Yes, I was there. Oh, you were yeah, there. I was yeah. there too. Yeah. Um, and uh, you saw some very interesting testimony, I thought, at the table. It um, was fascinating. Yeah, it was. The lack of testimony on the part of Con Ed. They, they didn't know so many answers. Dodged a lot of questions? Yes, they did. Dodged. I said they weren't prepared. Yeah, I, I, they, good, weren't, they didn't care. We'll come back, they said, yes. with more information. Yeah. But um, So what I'm going to today, though, is interesting. Yeah. Uh, I, I think we're running short on time, so I'll quickly say. It's okay. Um, I'm going to a meeting today with the county attorney. Being attorney myself, the county executive office asked me to get involved with the county attorney to help them with potential litigation strategies, if there are any, uh, to protect the people of Westchester against the utilities and their uh, lack of preparation uh, and being ready to deal with the power outages during the storms. I'm going to a meeting. As soon as we finish here, I'm going straight to the meeting with the county attorney. Right. Uh, okay. We have about 30 seconds. Uh, one last message to the new consumers out there. If you what have you a complaint, call us. Yes. Call and my office. Yeah. Again, 914-995-2155. Give us a call. We'll do our best to help. All right. Well, new Director of Consumer Protection for Westchester County, New York, USA, Jim Mizano, longtime legislator, knows both sides of the story. Thank you for being heard tonight on Peel to Be, to be Heard. Thank you so much. Right. John Bailey, good night for people to be heard.